So the short answer is yes, there are some people making money in AI right now. Some are obvious, like Nvidia, which pulled in over $100 billion in 24 from its data center business alone. AI is also fueling massive revenue streams in cloud services, software, and AI as a service. There's no shortage of money flowing in. But here's the catch. For every company raking in profits, there are a dozen burning cash just to stay in the game. The industry is flooded with investment, both in hardware and software, and while many companies don't need to be profitable yet, that grace period won't last forever. The moment of reckoning is coming fast. So where is AI revenue actually coming from? In this video, we're going to break down who's making money, how they're making it, and what metrics really matter. And while software and services are the most visible parts of AI, none of it happens without hardware. The demand for AI compute is driving a renaissance in chip design, pushing new architectures, memory technologies, and system infrastructure. That investment is reshaping the entire semiconductor industry. But for now, we're in a golden era of AI and chip design. But the real question is, who's still standing when the dust settles? Now, as with any technology shift, there's a chain of value that moves from raw innovation to real world products, and AI is no different. To understand how this industry works, let's break down the AI value chain. Now, at the foundation, we have the AI hardware developers. This includes NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, Tenstorrent, Cerebrus, Next Silicon, companies designing the compute engines that power AI. But it's not just the chip makers. The ecosystem also includes foundries like TSMC, Samsung, Intel, and Global Foundries, as well as ASIC design firms like Broadcom, Marvell, Alchip, and MediaTek. Then you've got companies working on key enabling technologies, optical interconnects, next-gen memory, and server infrastructure. Without this layer, AI just doesn't run. And once the chips are built, they need buyers. AI hardware moves through two main channels. At first, we have the cloud providers, the hyperscalers like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Oracle buy AI accelerators in bulk and rent out compute power to businesses. Secondly, we have system builders, companies like Supermicro, HPE, and Dell, all integrate AI hardware into servers and workstations, selling to enterprise customers or secondary cloud providers. After this, we move into AI software, which is where things get more complex. We have model builders that create the AI itself, Companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Mistral build foundation models while others specialize in domain-specific AI. Optimization and tooling firms also help businesses here fine-tune and deploy AI efficiently. So on top of this, cloud AI services package these models into easy-to-use platforms, making AI accessible to customers without deep machine learning expertise. At the end of it all is end users, whether they're enterprises building their own AI stacks or startups integrating pre-built AI solutions, these drive demand across the chain. There's also the business layer, the companies that integrate AI into the real world applications. Some companies sell AI directly as a service, while others embed AI into their existing products. Some are using AI to reduce their own costs, while others are charging customers new fees for AI powered features. Now the challenge here is that this value chain isn't clear cut. Many companies don't just fit into one category, they do multiple things. Nvidia doesn't just sell GPUs, it also provides AI software stacks. Cloud providers don't just offer compute, they partner with model developers and sell pre-trained AI services. What matters is where the company sits in this chain, because that determines how they generate revenue, whether through hardware, infrastructure, or software. So now that we've mapped out the AI value chain, let's get to the real question. How do companies actually make money with AI? At the high level, there are two main ways. Firstly, using AI to make their own business more efficient. This is just simply cutting costs by speeding things up or improving existing products. Secondly, we have selling AI as a product or a service, either as a standalone business selling tokens or by adding AI powered features that customers will pay extra for. Now that first one, efficiency. One of the most immediate ways AI adds value is by saving companies money. Now that could mean automating something that used to take human effort, making an existing process faster or more accurate, or reducing the backend compute costs of running a service. Take gaming, for example. Right now, AI-based image generation can fill in about eight out of nine pixels on screen, cutting down the workload on a GPU. 
This means better graphics without increasing power consumption. Same thing in software. Adobe uses AI-powered cutout tools to make selections near instant, something that used to take a manual effort. Even cloud companies are using AI to optimize their own power consumption, cutting their electricity bills without charging anything visible to customers. So even if a company isn't selling AI directly, they're still making money from it just by lowering their costs. But then there's the other side of AI, where companies use it to generate entirely new revenue streams, or the killer app. This is where you see things like AI as a service come in. If you've ever used ChatGPT, GitHub Copilot, or AI-powered automation tools, you are already seen this in action. Some companies build AI-powered assistants or analytics tools and charge users directly, while others bake AI into their existing products and either raise prices or charge extra for premium features. For example, Microsoft bundles AI into enterprise software and charges more for the AI-enhanced versions. OpenAI, Anthropic, and others sell AI model access via APIs, letting businesses plug into AI without having to build their own models. Some startups are even building industry-specific AI assistants, targeting legal, medical, or financial markets where speed and accuracy translate directly into billable hours. And this is where things start to get really interesting, because whether a company is using AI internally or selling it externally, everything comes down to two key numbers. Firstly, dollars per token. How much does it actually cost to generate AI output? Second is tokens per second per system. How fast can AI models generate results on your system? If a company spends $5 per million tokens, but can sell a service built on those tokens for $2,000 per million, that's a massive profit margin. But if costs start creeping up, or if competition drives down pricing, those margins shrink fast. This is why AI infrastructure is such a battleground right now. These companies that can generate tokens more efficiently, either cheaper or faster, will dominate. And that's driving major investment in better AI hardware, better model efficiency, and more scalable AI services. So what's the real game? It's not just about who's using AI, it's about who can run it the most efficiently. For companies trying to stay ahead in AI, efficiency is everything. The bigger players aren't just buying AI hardware. They're trying to own the whole stack. That means building their own AI models, optimizing their own infrastructure, and cutting out as many external costs as possible. Why? Well, turns out AI is actually expensive. The companies that control both the compute and the models are the ones that stand the best chance of surviving long term. And this is where the fear of missing out, or FOMO, kicks in. No company wants to be left behind in AI, so they're spending billions to make sure they're in the race. The hyperscalers, such as Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Meta, are designing custom AI chips so they're not reliant on NVIDIA. Enterprises that never cared about AI before are scrambling to build in-house teams. Even startups are getting swept up in this, raising huge rounds just to keep up with competitors. But the reality is, if you don't have a plan for AI, you risk falling behind, whether you're a chip maker, a software provider, or even a company that just uses AI internally. The economics of AI need to keep scaling, because right now, AI models are growing at a pace where compute demand is outstripping efficiency gains. If AI is going to remain viable at scale, the industry needs new ways to drive down costs without sacrificing performance. Now, one company looking at exactly this problem is Recognize. I spoke with the co-founder, RK Anand, about what needs to happen to keep AI's economics sustainable. Yeah, so let's go over it in a maybe sequence way. If I think about traditional LLMs, um, they are token in, token out. I would call them fast thinking, blurt out an answer kind of models. The, the shift to chain of thought models actually adds a wrinkle in the economic model of how you think about it. Because the run times now become longer, but not only do they become longer by a couple of orders of magnitude, but they become variable. So how do you now, if I think about a simple agentic or say a chain of thought model, I ha have an input prompt. Then it goes away. It can goes away, go away for seconds, minutes, in some cases hours, and then come back with a set of output tokens, an answer to your question or, or uh, analysis that you asked for. How do you measure tokens in that intermediate point between input tokens and output tokens where the machine is chewing through and traversing many paths before it gives you an answer. So I think that there has to be a shift in how you measure uh, value that gets delivered to customers and how you charge them for it. Um, 
So that's the first part. Now you think about agentic systems where you might want to either run multiple chain of thought models in parallel or in daisy chain them in sequence. When you put them in or that order, now you have added variability on top of variability. And so now if I think about a standard language model and you go to a chain of thought model that is slow thinking, you will have a couple of orders of magnitude more time being consumed on the compute system. And now you have an agentic system, you might actually multiply that by another factor of 10. So when I think about this, I think what has to happen is we have to shift from a tokenomics or token-based approach to be a more thoughtful approach on dwell time on the machine. And when you do that, you have to measure and charge customers based on the capital that is used to buy that machine and depreciate it over three, five years, whatever the period that the operator chooses, and the operational cost, the energy consumed by that machine during the time of the dwell time of the user. So a combination of these requires you to think about it uh, math economically and uh, pricing uh, completely different from the world we were in in 2024, a few months back in a tokenomics kind of world. Because the variability, the, the dwell time inside the model between in a chain of thought model is very random and very variable. And this is where the battle is shifting because the companies that solve AI efficiently aren't just building better hardware. They're defining the economics of AI itself. One of the biggest drivers of rising AI costs is a concept that is beginning to gain traction, agentic AI. Now, this term means different things to different people, but in simple terms, agentic AI is about chaining AI models together. One model generates an output, which another model refines, and another makes decisions based on that refined output. This kind of AI could unlock entirely new capabilities, but it massively increases commute demand. Right now, we're seeing AI improve at a staggering pace. GPT-3 level performance is now achievable with models that are over 1,000 times cheaper to run than when GPT-3 was first launched. If that trend continues, AI will not only become more accessible, but with agentic AI increasing computational needs, that cost-saving trend might not last forever. And that's why companies are racing to build more efficient AI systems because the companies that can generate the most output for the lowest cost will dominate the next phase of AI. So with all this talk about AI costs and efficiency, who is actually making money in AI right now? I often say there are two companies, NVIDIA for actually building the hardware and me for talking about it. But realistically, I give two standout examples that show very different ways to succeed in this space, OpenAI and IBM. Now let's start with OpenAI probably the most well-known AI company right now. Their business model is simple, AI or tokens as a service. Instead of selling chips or infrastructure, they sell access to their AI models, whether through ChatGPT subscriptions or enterprise API access. And it's working. OpenAI is generating billions in revenue, largely because they're operating at such a huge scale. The bigger they get, the cheaper the AI generation costs become, which means that they can undercut smaller competitors while keeping strong margins. They're also optimizing the costs in smart ways. A good example is that instead of relying entirely on NVIDIA's AI hardware, OpenAI has been experimenting with AMD chips, and in some cases, they're able to get 10% more tokens per dollar. That may not sound like much, but at OpenAI scale, 10% efficiency gains translate to hundreds of millions in cost savings. Of course, the downside is that AI as a service is expensive to run. OpenAI is spending billions and tens of billions developing new models and competition in this space is fierce. Staying ahead isn't just about having the best AI, it's about having the best infrastructure, partnerships, and that word again, efficiency. Now compare that to IBM, a company that isn't selling AI models directly, but is making AI a core part of its consulting business. IBM's strength isn't in competing with OpenAI, it's in using AI to deliver high value services to big enterprises. They have their own AI models, custom and efficient, their own custom AI hardware, and deep expertise in enterprise software. A Fortune 500 company might go to IBM and say, we need to reduce our HR costs, or we need AI to automate our customer support. Instead of just selling access to an AI model, IBM works with them to build a tailored AI powered system. And here's where IBM really makes its money. If they can build a system that saves a Fortune 500 company millions in operating costs, that's an easy sell. The cost of running the AI might be $5 per million tokens, but if the AI saves a client $2,000 per million tokens, IBM can price their service at a massive markup. 
Now this model scales differently than OpenAI. IBM isn't looking to serve millions of customers. They're looking to land a few big contracts, each worth millions of dollars. And it's working. IBM's AI-driven consulting business is now worth over a billion dollars, and it's growing every quarter. So these two companies show two very different approaches. One, OpenAI wins by scale, charging thousands of companies for AI services at high volume. And two, IBM wins by specialization, using AI to create custom, high-value solutions that businesses will pay a premium for. And as AI continues to evolve, these two models, high-volume AI as a service and high-margin AI consulting, are likely to keep defining the industry. So going back again to that original question, where's the money in AI? And the answer depends entirely on where you sit in the value chain. If you're in hardware, the goal is to sell as many chips as possible while constantly improving efficiency. If you're in software, it's about making AI easier to use and deploy, whether that's through cloud platforms, enterprise tools, or AI as a service. If you're an end user business, it's about deciding whether AI cuts costs, creates new revenue, or both. But at the core of this is one economic principle. AI is only valuable if it's either making something cheaper or making something new that people will pay for. And there's the one potential catch. AI costs aren't guaranteed to keep going down. Right now, AI services might seem cheap because companies are burning cash to grow, just like how Uber once offered cheap rides to kill off competition before slowly raising prices. But as AI models become more complex, costs could actually start increasing again. Take this concept of agentic AI, where models don't just generate text, but actively plan, iterate, and refine their own responses. These multi-step AI processes could double or triple compute requirements, pushing costs back up. This means the companies that control AI's economics, hardware efficiency, model training costs, and cloud infrastructure will define the winners and losers. So as the industry evolves, there are two really big questions. Who can build AI at the lowest cost? And who can sell AI for the highest price? Right now, companies like OpenAI, NVIDIA, and IBM are finding different ways to make AI profitable, but the long-term economics aren't settled yet. For now, AI is still in its gold rush phase. Money is pouring in, new companies are emerging, and the technology is evolving faster than ever. But as with any gold rush, the real winners might not just be the ones digging for gold, but the ones selling the shovels.